What is going on today, my online poker players? Now, I've got another good update to wrap up the week on a session I played on Bovada Poker, where we had a crazy all-in at the 200 no limit stakes, where I won't say what happened, you're just going to have to stick around and see. And I also wanted to touch on the current state of online poker, and if any of you are thinking about taking this game more seriously or just wondering what it might look like five years down the road, and believe me, I've given this a lot of thought because with things like AI being brought up and the constant question of the integrity of some online poker sites in the market, it's something that is always in the back of people's heads, which, you know, it should be. But here's the thing. As long as you're playing on a reputable, reputable site, you really got nothing to worry about. And as far as AI or bots go, I'm confident telling you that none of this is going to impact the results you get in online poker unless you're a weak player. You know, things like bluffing, getting creative, value betting, four bet jamming, position raising and protecting are all things that will come from an actual person who is playing. So what I'm getting at here is that, you know, you need to just work on your game constantly and not worry about all of the external things like AI and bots and that kind of stuff. You know, all you guys can really control when you're playing poker is, you know, how good you're playing every time you log in and start a poker session. That's really it. Okay, with that said, you know, if you guys are looking for a solid site to play on, you know, I would recommend Bovada Poker. This is one of the main sites that I play on, as well as a few others, but I've been a member here for over 10 years because, you know, I love the software. The players are fairly easy to beat at these mid-state games. Um, so, of course, if you guys did want to get started on here, there will be some bonus links you guys can check out directly below in the description and comments. You could also get on our poker newsletter where we send out one email a week on you know, hand analysis and really just tips up you guys make more money at the tables. Please tap that like and let's get into these freaking hands. Okay, and stick around as always throughout the uh, the whole session here because you know I think um, I think just you know by you guys watching how I play and it's it's always different. I need to I need to explain that because I I really do. Every time I play, it's always different because I'm always playing with different people. So sometimes I'm really aggressive. Sometimes I'm a little bit more passive. Um, and also with specific players, if I see there's a guy at the table, and you guys have probably seen this before too, like let's say you buy into a $200 game and you see somebody's up to $800 or $1,000, it's very likely if they four or five decks their money, they're doing something right. So, you know, those are the type of players you kind of want to stay away from uh, usually when you get into a uh, poker session, unless you absolutely have, you know, a made hand or you can't lose, um, you know. So uh, anyways, I'm, I'm just saying that. Now, I, I uh, had some interesting spots as well in this where, you know, you might look at it and be like, why did you bet? Why did you fold? You know, sometimes you just got to, you got to go with your gut sometimes. Sometimes your gut's right uh, when you're playing online poker because, you know, obviously you can't see the other player and um, all you can really go by is information, you know, how they played uh, preflop. Did they raise? Did they three bet? Um, you know, did they limp? And then, you know, you just have to put all this information together. Anyways, I was in a kind of a tricky spot with this hand. Obviously, it doesn't look too bad. But I ended up giving this one up, which was kind of a tough hold for me with nines, you know. I didn't really like the run out there. It was kind of like either he's got it or he's bluffing me. And, you know, I just opted to fold that one. But it was close. It wasn't like an insta fold, I guess, but it but it was close. I thought it through. I thought if he's going to put like a big bet on the river, I might just fold this. And that's what I did. All right, so I continue with the 7-9 here. I mean, we still have second pair to this board, plus a lot of weird kind of like straights out there. So I figured, you know, let's let's protect our hand. And we took that one down. Now, in total for this session, you know, I, I did cut it down because um, it was a little bit over an hour. So I tried to get to the to the meat of it for you guys for most of these hands. Now, I am trying to upload longer sessions. It's just, you know, uh, uploading over an hour of me talking about each individual hands a lot. That's why I try to cut it down at least. You know, I might, might get up to like 30 to 45 minute videos, but, you know, I... Typically when I'm playing, it's usually an hour to an hour and a half max. Sometimes I get up to two hours for my sessions and, you know, I just stick to the $200 games, $500 games, and it's what I do. All 
All right, player three took that one down. All right, queen four offsuit in the big blind. This, if I'm getting raised here, obviously it's going to be a fold. Now, if it was suited, it would have been different. Uh, eight three deuce board. All right, just folding here, which is annoying because we would have hit the queen on the turn. I was like, come on, man, really? Really? Is this happening? Oh, even worse with the, the queen here. Now, the flush got there, but, you know, I don't, I don't think there was a flush there. Personally, I don't. I don't know what that guy had, but maybe... Maybe a pair, maybe he was bluffing it. I have no idea. But I definitely don't think he had a queen. All right, king eight, check fold mode here. But we paired the eight on the turn, which, you know, you look at it, could be good. All right, river card is six. I was actually okay just checking this down with the second pair. I think we took it down. Okay, we did. All right, so just the beginning of this session, not doing a whole lot, just waiting for hands, really not putting any crazy bluffs, just um, just playing solid poker, really not having to make any big bluffs just yet. But um, the all-in hand was definitely an interesting one, so, I mean, you guys just really got to stick around for, uh, for it. I mean, that's all I can really say right now. It was a good one. Check fold here. Bluffing wouldn't just doesn't make sense. What am I bluffing with? Pretending I have a jack. No, I'll just fold it. Or right, king five. You know, not it because I'm playing on Bovada in this one too, guys. Um, I'll tell you what, Bovada definitely has like. Uh, a 50 50 reputation with people you know because they're like an offshore site you know the thing is you know you look at where online poker is at in the united states and he, really all of the traffic is on uh bovada and ignition i mean their network is pretty much the biggest right now for united states players because what else is there you know there's just nothing. And you don't want to play on a site where there's nobody playing on it, which is a big problem. You know, it, it is a big problem. But like I said, I've been playing on Bovada for over over 10 years. I've always been paid here. You know, I love everything about the software. You know, they're owned by Bodog, which has been around for over 20 years. And, you know, even though they get like the bad rep, but I mean, there's a lot of positive things about them as well. You know, I just think it's 50 50. It's mixed because they're offshore. <clears throat> Ooh, this guy's putting in the rays. Pocket sevens got extremely lucky right there. That was pretty crazy. All right, here we go with pocket eights. Now, I got aggressive with this hand because I was trying to get maybe one or two opponents in this hand to fold, but really how this one played out was um, pretty special. Player four made the call, player five. Okay, not a whole lot to like here, but because I was the open raiser, I decided to continue with my story. And sometimes a play like this could just get both players to fold. Uh, we do have one caller and two callers, so not exactly uh, you know, getting anybody to fold here. Okay, so... Um, this guy checks pretty quick. Now, somebody could have a king. It's possible. You know, they don't have to. 
uh, I decided to stay aggressive with this hand. You know, even though we're looking at it and you're probably thinking like, dude, what are you doing? Um, what I'm trying to get people to fold here is queen tens, you know, a pair of jacks, get people off the flush draw, and really just thinking that no one has a king here. So that's why I stayed aggressive with it. This guy makes the call, but we banked the uh, miracle eight here. And um, now I'm hoping he has a king. And because he made that, that turn call on me, he's got a king. Now, making this play is, let, let's just put ourselves in his shoes. He's got a king, right? Let's say he's got a weak king, king nine, king 10, you know, those type of hands. This is a really, really hard fold. I'd say it's almost impossible. And the way I played this hand, you know, I'm repping the king, but he's probably thinking to himself, like, what are the odds this guy's got a king? Is he just full of it? Did he miss the flush? Um, does he, you know, does he, he's thinking about my story that I'm trying to tell here. And that's what, what I was trying to do. I was trying to tell a story. You know, I couldn't get him to fold on the turn because he probably had that king. It's probably just a weak one. Um, you know, so the boat is definitely good here. And my hand is so disguised that there's just no way. And, uh, you know, can't really blame him because this is one of those spots where it's like, I've got it or I'm just bluffing. It, it's one or the other. Um, unfortunately for him, we binked the eight and uh, we took down a nice pot right there, guys. Uh, I'm not going to say that that was all skill because obviously like I was trying to get both those guys off the hand. Um, and if we made it to the river right there and obviously the flush didn't come or the eight didn't come. I'm probably just checking there. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that was, a that was just a crazy run out for us. And, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, those kind of things happen. It's poker, but I, I put him exactly on the hand that he had and he couldn't get away from it. And I don't blame the guy, you know, you, you, sometimes you just can't get away from it. You know, uh, I have an, another example and I'll probably get this one to you guys next week, but, I had a hand with um, pocket jacks, and uh, I just didn't believe somebody when I had jacks, and I just, like, made a, a really tough call on them. And I'm not going to say what happened, but, you know, um, it, every situation's different, man. Every situation's different, and, you know, the thing is, if you're on the winning side or the losing side, you got to be able to take it uh, without getting emotional, you know, both ways. Uh, something that happens that I see happen all the time too with players is, you know, if they get like a double up in a session, they start playing more hands and there's something called winner's tilt. And it's something you should think about too. Like when you're winning and you're killing it, you know, you start playing hands you shouldn't in positions you shouldn't because you're thinking to yourself like, oh man, I'm winning. I'm just not going to lose. Uh, winner's tilt is a real thing. It's hard to describe, but I've been there myself where, you know, I'm doing really good after playing for like 45 minutes to an hour and I start playing like two, five suited, like I would like an ace king suited. So just be aware that just because you're winning or, you know, you got to double up or you're just doing good in a session doesn't mean you should start getting super cocky. You really got to just keep everything in a perspective. And if you lose like that guy did, it's all good, guys. It's all good because you know, um, losing is part of the game. You know, you just, uh, like I said, really all you can control every time you get into one of these poker sessions online is like just how good you're playing. Just play good poker and you're going to get the results, right? I mean, that's the reality of, uh, of doing this. But it's tough. It's tough not to get emotional. It's the hardest thing for everybody, I'm going to be honest with you none of this affects me anymore. I've almost become numb to it because I've just been playing for so long. And, you know, I love the competition of playing online poker. You know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be mid or higher state games. I mean, I, obviously, you know, you're not going to make much money if you're playing really low games, but you know, the competition factor, getting those wins, locking them in and uh, knowing that you played good poker in a session. I don't like when I win and you know, I won with a garbage hand and I got super lucky when I had like a two or three percent chance to win going to the turn and river. I don't like those wins. I like the ones where I I know I played good and I just dominated my opponent. Those are the wins that I really like getting, if you know what I'm saying. Because like I said, ultimately you just want to improve 
uh, each time you play. All right, we took them down with deuces right there. I'm sure you guys like that. We got the ducks. Ducks in a pond. All right, next time we did three seven. So we got a few more hands coming up here, so continue sticking around. But, yeah, man, just uh, taking it down there with um, with uh, the eights. Definitely a good feeling. Definitely a lucky river for us. All right, check fold here. Yes, sir. Folding that. Ooh, who would have had a, a draw, a flush draw? All right, this hand was interesting. Now, there's going to be another all in coming up here shortly from player three, and we are going to call him down. It was, uh, it was a little weird, a little weird spot for us, but. Once again, I'm not going to say what happened. You're just going to have to wait and see. Okay, not a good flop for Jack Deuce. But we did hit a flush draw on the turn. Probably call a really small bet here, but um, I was definitely thinking he's probably got nothing. Deuces definitely feel good to me here, so. And did this one get checked down? It did. The ducks in a pond, or I'm sorry, we don't have the ducks in a pond. We just have the, the pair of deuces here. Ducks in a pond is pocket deuces. Okay, um, yeah, final hand here. We got a uh, jack-queen suited in the big blind. This is a hand I would three-bet all day just to build a pot. Don't really care what anybody's got. All right, player three down to his final $31. This guy's definitely tilted. He's prob this is probably all the money he's got left, too. I mean, he didn't rebuy, so it's usually a sign you're, you're broke. Okay, so I put in the raise. He's just going to call. If he would have shoved all in, I'd probably just make the call too here, but I'm definitely raising this hand. I'm not just going to check it. All right, so we paired the jack here. What's unfortunate about this hand is we have no flush card, which sucks. But we've got top pair. All right, he shoved. There was just no way I could fold this. Um, he could have anything here, like maybe a one-card flush. We've got top pair. I just, I just know it's good. He turns over a 3-8 suited, man. Like, what is going on? Drawing dead on the turn. Um, ridiculous play. Okay, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed another update here. You know, um, just wanted to wrap up the week uh, on a high note because in the previous video we lost with um, – what pocket kings for like six hundred dollars which uh you know sucks uh anyways um if you made it to the end you know tap that like i'd appreciate it subscribe for more poker videos get on that newsletter directly below in the description and comments and we'll see you guys in the next one